I would like to say this morning in all seriousness that I appreciate last week so much. Thank you, Brother Gann. That was so thoughtful. And I want to thank all of you and all of the wonderful, nice things that you said. You just touched my, my heart more than I can tell you. And I'm going to miss you. And I tell you, and I'm just as serious as I can be. I am not expecting to go to a church to have what we have here at Prospect. I'm not expecting. I wished I could, but I'm not expecting to go to a church where the people get along as well and such wonderful unity as it is here. And I'm not sending you any flowers. I'm just saying seriously, I'm not expecting a pastor of your caliber. Brother Gann, Sister Gann have been a great pastor to me. They've just been so much and have been such a blessing in my life. And I thank them. And I thank all of you. And I'm going to be praying for you. And I hope you will pray for me. I would uh, like for you to pray for me this morning that God would give me the strength, the physical ability, and the anointing to preach this message. And for those on the internet that see this possibly a week from now, I'm asking you to pray back. Okay, nowadays, and it's a wonderful thing that people have started to doing. They're going through a, a drive through and they pay back for the people behind them. Isn't that beautiful? Have you ever had that to happen for you? I haven't, but it's a, it's a wonderful thing. So I'm asking you on the Internet to pray back for today. Does anybody believe that God has the power to hear their prayers before they even pray it and would touch us today? That's the kind of God that we're talking about that we serve this morning. And so I'm asking you on the Internet to pray back. I'm asking you here this morning to pray with me and to help me with those good amens. Say an amen to a preacher is like saying sick them to a bulldog. Turn with me in the, to the book of St. John, chapter 16. In verses 20 through 22, St. John 16, verses 20 through 22. I would like to speak to you on a message this morning that I've de de titled, and I think it quite appropriately, Until We Meet Again. You may also mark in your scripture 1 Thessalonians 4 16 through 18 that we will be reading there in just a moment you'll have to forgive me I have written this down on paper somehow all of my Bibles got shipped off to Louisiana the last, the, the first trip that was went down. And I don't know how that happened. I keep one Bible by my computer and the rest of the Bibles in my study. And somehow it ended up with the rest of them going to Louisiana. So I've been doing my scripture reading in the morning with my coffee on the computer. <laughs> All right, we're reading in uh, St. John 16, 20 through 22, where he said, Very, very, I say unto you, that they shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more anguish, for joy of a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, 
but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Heavenly Father, we're thankful this morning to be in your house. We're thankful for the opportunity to break forth the bread of life unto your people. I ask, God, that you will help us, God, to dine upon the word, Lord, and to receive the spirits into our heart, God. Nourish us today, Lord, in body and in soul. In Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord. Till we meet again, as you know that I will be leaving at some undetermined time, but shortly, and uh, <clears throat> as I say, I'm going to miss you. So I speak this th this morning in a physical way, but also in a spiritual way, till we meet again. He said, I say unto you, they shall weep and lament, <coughs> or lament, however you want to say it, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. At the present, you and I are in anguish. At the present, we leap, we lament, we cry out, there are many sorrowful things going on today in the lives of the people of the Lord while the world is out there rejoicing, while the world is out there laughing, while the world is out there having their nannies, as we country folks say. The people of God suffer. But now God in this scripture gives us a hope. You know, I think so much about that scripture in, Lord, the last three years. The devil has fought me so hard, not just physically, but in other ways. And I think so often about that scripture where the apostle Paul said, if in this life only I have hope, brother again, I'm above all men most miserable. Oh, I would hate to know that this world is all that I had to look forward to. But I am looking for halabositabokonde. I am looking <coughs> for a hope beyond this life. And I'm telling you, I am keeping that faith. And I am holding on to it, people, until we meet again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I hope that I get to come back and visit with you. I will certainly remember you. But if that never happens, hallelujah, I will meet you one day in heaven. Hallelujah. A woman, when she is to intervail, has sorrow because her hour is come. I personally don't know anything about that. How many of you ladies have had children? Oh, I see hands everywhere. Was it painful? Yeah. Was it sorrowful because of the pain? Not because you knew what was coming, but did the pain make it sorrowful? Hallelujah. I'm just going by what I'm told. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish. I've never been there when a child was delivered. I've seen it on TV. But it seems like to me, from what I've told, the, the mother that's, that's, oh, my God, it hurts so bad, it's so painful. But once they take that baby, I think they take it and clean it up and then bring it back and show it to the mother, and then she forgets all the pain. Then she forgets all, you know, there's some mothers that they put in bed months before the delivery and she forgets all about that because she sees that fine baby boy or that fine baby girl there and she don't think about the anguish that she's gone through anymore amen a mother told me that when i was born 
my, my brother and I both, that we had long black, black hair that hung down to, to our shoulders or past our shoulders. Long hair for a baby. In fact, my hair was so long and so thick that when they took me and cleaned me up, they put me in a dress. And put bows in my hair. If you go off and tell this, I'm going to lie and deny every bit of it. And they brought me in, and when my daddy saw me, he said, take my boy back and take that off of him. <laughs> but they take that baby and they clean it up and they bring it back in and Oh, mom is just full of joy. She remembers no more the anguish, for joy of a man is born into the world. Hallelujah. She remembers the anguish no more, for the joy of a man is born into the world. I'm going to show you something in the scripture you might not have ever noticed. It didn't say a child was born in this world, but it said a, a man was born. Now, in this particular instance, it could be a, a, a man or a woman, unlike what Brother Dan was talking about earlier. <clears throat> because when you have a child, that child is only put on loan. Because it is going to become a man 18 years or so. Well, nowadays, sometimes 30 years. Amen. It's going, he's going to become his own man, or she's going to become her own woman. So that child is really, in all reality, put on loan to you. And why are you, <clears throat> why is uh, he or she put on loan to you? Because it is your grave responsibility to bring up that child in the way of the Lord and to bring he or she up with manners and how they should act. You should bring them up with great morals. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord. I, I think it was possibly Spurgeon. A lady came to one time and asked him, she said, uh, when should I start training my child? He said, well, how old is your child? She said, he's two years old. He said, my Lord, run back to your house and start right now because you're two years late. Well said. I had an aunt <clears throat> after her children were grown she would call each one of them every night and if they didn't answer she would get in her car and go to their house and the boys took it <laughs> I won't even say it will I but they, she had a girl that told her, Mom, I'm a grown woman. I don't want you coming here and checking up on me. I've got sense enough to know when to come home. You know, this, she was out on her own, had her own place. She didn't want to be that child that her mother wanted her to keep because she was put on loan. And after she'd grown up, she was no longer on loan. When you have a child, of course, you always love it. You always do your best to help it in however you can. <clears throat> but all of the teaching that you do or can do has been done that first 18 years. Catholic people tell us, <clears throat> give me a child... <clears throat> at a certain age, and I forget now what it was, and he or she will always be Catholic. 
why can't we do that in the church of God? Put so much training into them. Or any Pentecostal church out there. <clears throat> okay, so that child is put on loan. And ye therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, he said, and your heart shall rejoice. And no man taketh that from you. I want us <clears throat> to look here and see if you've ever noticed this also in there. <clears throat> it does not say that your joy, uh, that your sorrow would be replaced with joy. It says that your sorrow will turn into joy which is the difference between present tense and future tense. It wasn't said in the present tense. It was said in the future tense. It shall be turned into joy because your sorrow is not turned into joy on this earth. And if you're looking for that type of salvation, then you're going to be greatly disappointed because as long as you're in this on this earth, as long as you hear, you are going to have sorrows. You are going to have trials. You are going to be sick. You are going to have bad things to happen. You are going to have the devil to fight you with all four feet and claws. Hallelujah. It is a future tense in which I, my sorrow, will be turned into a joy. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of God. Do you feel the Spirit here this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If we're willing to suffer the anguish and sorrow, it will be turned into everlasting joy. You know, a man can go out in this world and of this world and have joy, but the next day that hangover is pretty unjoyous. There's no such word, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> I am sure there cannot be a joy to having a hangover. This is a joy that that I'm talking about here, this future joy, this one of till we meet again, that one that's going to be coming up, it's not a joy that can ever be clouded by tears. Sometimes in this earth, <clears throat> we shed tears. Our eyes are clouded because of the sorrow. But that sorrow of joy is by an eternal perspective. And I would, that's what you and I have today, an eternal perspective. Not with our eyes on this world, not with the thought of immediate satisfaction. That's why a lot of people are in such financial trouble. They want immediate satisfaction, immediate gratification. That's why credit cards zoom up. They can't wait. I got to have it now. Hallelujah. I quit preaching now and gone to meddling, hadn't I? <clears throat> this sorrow I'm talking about, it becomes... It brings us closer to Christ. It helps us to understand Him, and it gives us a connection with Him through suffering. Because when I think about suffering, I think about the cross of Christ. Whatever you think of Him, good or bad, you have to appreciate the, Jim, the preaching of Jimmy Swecker because he constantly, constantly, constantly spoke on a subject that's now avoided on the on the media through preaching and that is the cross hallelujah we're looking at the cross 
from here, but if we look at it from a, an eternal perspective, it is going to be Jesus Christ on the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. That's where the cross is going to lead. Till we meet again. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Until we meet again. For now, I say Aristotle. That's the biblical Greek word for goodbye. But one day, you and I, you know, till we meet again, one day we're going to say katrata, which is hello. Both of these Greek words are in the plural. Oh, so many goodbyes we have to say on this earth. Just said goodbye to a, a precious, precious, precious woman I thought so much of, Sister Brown. Sometimes through death, sometimes through moving, sometimes loved ones, sometimes children move away. And it brings sorrow. But there's never been a hello. Katrata, there's never been a hello. The way that hello is going to be in heaven. Can you imagine you're walking down, I'm walking down the streets of gold, and here I come up on brother and sister Gan, walking hand in hand. And I say, Katrata to them. Hallelujah. And we just do a little jig right there on the streets of gold. Praise be in the name of God. And you know, one thing that's going to make it heaven even better is he's not going to have a heart condition. There's not going to be any diabetes. That leg's not going to turn black. And Sister Gann's not going to have any more brain surgeries. She's not going to have problem with that uh, cluster of the headaches. Yes, that spider. Yeah, that. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is the hello that I am looking for, people. Blessed be his name. Let me get on here. A few points till we meet again. We live and we need to live in the light of his first coming. <clears throat> Luke 19 and 10 says Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. That was his purpose for coming to this earth. We need to live in that light at all times to be ready. You know, I'm just going to make a confession to you. There's been times I wouldn't want to see the Lord come. So I had said something or done something or thought something that I'd have just rather the Lord waited for me to repent and say, God, I'm sorry. Well, we need to live ready with that great expectation. We need to be watching the eastern clouds of glory because he is soon to return, people. Somebody lift your hands and say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now John 10 and 28 tells us that no man can pluck us out of his hand and thank God for that. And there, that's a, a scripture used by, oh, uh, Lord, this, this hellish doctrine. That's the, all, all I can say about it is a, a hellish doctrine that says, <clears throat> once I'm saved, always I'm saved, no matter what I do. That's of the devil, people. No man can 
pluck me out of his hand, but I can pluck me out of his hand. I'm not forced to serve him, even after I'm saved. I'm not forced to serve him. It's still my choice. Choice I better take. You know, you take an old mother rabbit, and she'll pluck that hair out of her stomach, and she'll make the prettiest little nest down in the ground for her little babies. Just beautiful. Well, I can pluck myself out of God's hand if I so choose. And I could give you so many, many scriptures on that, but I'm going to move on now. Let us just know to stay ready. Let us just know to stay sanctified. Let us know to pr be prayed up and packed up and ready to go. Because if we're not, if our lamps don't have the oil, if our wicks are not trimmed, we're going to miss the second coming of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless us, Lord. Hallelujah. The second point under this is we need to be discerning. First John uh, 4 and 1 said, Believe not every spirit, he said, but try the spirits. There are some spirits out there that are not of God. Amen. Even when this <coughs> book was written, <coughs> we were told there were already many antichrist. Amen. So you better believe, not believe every spirit. <clears throat> but you better try the spirits. Well, Brother Lau, how do I try a spirit? You need to see if that person aligns with the Word of God. And if he doesn't, then you better reject it and leave it alone and stay away from it and not be aligned with it. Amen. The Scripture tells us the, the Spirit and the Word agree. And the Spirit's not going to tell you one thing that's not in the Word of God. If it's a true Spirit, if it's a man preaching, he better be preaching from the book and not from tradition as the scribes. Not from personal thoughts. It's, it's okay to put personal thoughts in messages, but not to preach it as the Word. The Spirit and the Word agree. And the Word doesn't say anything that disagrees with the Spirit. The Holy Ghost and Jesus, who was termed the Word, are two-thirds of the Trinity. And they will and shall always agree. Hallelujah. So that's how we try the Spirit's. Number three, we need to uh, accept the uncertainties. And I'm getting very close to closing. People, we live in a time of great uncertainty. And I'm going to tell you something, maybe on a sad note, but we can't expect any better. <clears throat> no matter who's president, no matter who's governor, no matter who's mayor, it's just not going to get any better. And uh, I, uh, I'm a little past 39 years of old. I know it's hard to believe. But I've seen some things. But I have never seen the United States fall as fast as it has in the last few years. It's a, a future thing. It's a, a prophecy in that there would be a great falling away. But people, we are seeing a beginning of it right now, a falling away from, from God. 
falling away from the church. Uh, hmm, dear God. People are looking for an easier path. Isaiah uh, 30 and 10, speaking to me deceits. Speaking to me smooth things, it said, prophesying to me deceits. They want a, a soft doctrine. But again, preach his heart on us. He steps on our toes. And sometimes I go home with sore toes. But that's what I need, Brother Gann. I need hard preaching. I need somebody that preaches from the book. And every Sunday, there, was, there is a church not very far from right here where we are today. A man walked out of it one day, a man I know, and he said, I would like to go to church one time and not be told just how wonderful I am. He was saying, I'd like to be go to church. I'd like to go to church sometimes and hear the real word. Uh, Paul told Timothy to exhort, to uplift, to encourage, but also to rebuke. There's times I need exhortation, Brother Gann, and there's times I need a rebuking through the word and the spirit. Hallelujah. Great Lord. We're living in a time of uncertainty. <clears throat> Let us encourage one another till we meet again. I've used this scripture. Uh, uh, Brother Gann has used this scripture. You've heard it at funerals. But I'm going to take it in a little different context this time. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. For the Lord himself, he personally, is going to descend with a shout and the voice of an arch archangel. His voice and an archangel and the trump of God. And the dead shall rise first. And they which are alive and remain shall be called up together with him in the air. Hallelujah. And he says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's what I want to tell you. That's what I want to encourage you with till we meet again. You see, it's not happening here. Oh, he said, wherefore comfort one another with these words hallelujah how fast is this translation going to be or this transformation how fast are we going to be changed from from sorrow to eternal joy when are we going to see that eternal perspective how fast is that going to take place well let me tell you what it said it said it's going to take place faster than you can say a fat rat run across the roof with a piece of raw liver in his mouth. Well, that's the Cajun translation. It's actually said more like the fat rat run across the rooftop with a piece of fat liver in his mouth. I guarantee the world. Shy. I think the King James said it something like <clears throat> in the moment of a twinkling of an eye. This sister right here could explain it a lot better than I, but I remember some time ago uh, years ago uh, studying this and I'm understanding that a twinkle is faster than a blink. Does that make sense, sis? I can blink pretty fast, but that's how fast the transformation is going to take place. People, if we're ready, 
So of all of the negative things that I've said the morning, this morning that's going on in this world, I give you encouragement, I give you comfort in these words. Hallelujah. And if you're alive, oh, that very minute split of a second, you're going to wait for the dead in Christ to rise. And when they get to the about the top of the ground, then you're going to join with them. Oh, that you're going to join with them and you're going to meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. I was riding my bike this morning. I come to church on it. And I thought about, Lord, what if the rapture would take place, you know? This old bike would just go on out into wherever. Think about all the deaths that's going to occur when the rapture takes place. Cars hitting cars, trains hitting cars, uh, planes falling from the sky. Imagine all the people that's going to die in addition to all of the people that's just going to disappear. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? I only want to imagine it. I don't want to be here to see it. We live under the first coming, but we're looking unto the second coming, and it's going to happen. Take comfort in those words. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever, whatever sorrow that you have, whatever need you have in your life, I'm going to tell you, brother and sister, it is temporal. These things on, on this earth here are just temporary things. This is just the staging place. This is just the place to get dressed and to get cleaned up and ready, hallelujah, to actually go, to actually travel, hallelujah. Praise be unto the name of the Lord. That's the day that I'm looking for. And I'm looking at, at this earth. And I'm looking at the things around me. And I'm looking at this move that I'm about to make as a temporal thing because the Lord could come back before I even leave this place. And I'm telling you all of this until we meet again. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me please? Oh, halaba shata labo konde. Just worship Jesus right now. Oh, just let His Spirit come over you and worship Him right now. Just touch the Lord right now. Just let Him touch you. Let Him touch your life. Halaba tolaba siobo konde. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Till we meet again. Brother and sister, when we leave this building, we might not ever see, any of us may not ever see each other again on this earth. My God, how it pays to be ready. And I want to ask if there is a one one man, one woman. Maybe you've served God for a while, but there's something in your life and you just don't quite know for sure beyond a shadow of a doubt if you're ready to go. I want to ask you to come this morning. Please come down and, and let me pray with you. Please give God the opportunity to touch your life so that you will know that you know that you know that you are ready to go if there's just one. Hallelujah. This morning I asked you to come. Let us not take a chance. There are so many games of chance that we can play on this earth. Let us not play a game of chance with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If everybody here this morning feels that they're ready to go, hallelujah. 
I would like for us to come around the altar. And could we just rejoice and praise and worship him together this morning in such a beautiful way. Can we just let our voices sing out this morning if you're able to come? <laughs> 